Next on the board, Penn State. Let's talk about Manny Diaz being hired as the new defensive coordinator. Manny Diaz has not coached anywhere north of North Carolina State ever. That's a little bit troubling. Now, obviously, football is football, and if you are a good defensive coordinator, defense travels, you will be able to be successful wherever you go. But this one's interesting. He's never had to recruit in the Northeast. Obviously, when he was handed the Temple job, he, of course, came back for the Miami job very quickly thereafter. I mean, it's just a few days later. He has not coached up there. The, the irony, of course, that he was hired as the Temple coach three years ago, took the Miami job, got fired, and now he's the defensive coordinator at Penn State. That's interesting. That's very interesting to me. But Manny Diaz has been a, uh, a successful defensive coordinator. I'm curious about this. I, I don't know what the fit is, and maybe I should have done a little more you know, research into it, but you know, James Franklin and, and Manny, I believe you know, know, know each other. There is obviously some kind of a connection there, but they, they've not coached together from what I understand. And Manny Diaz knows nothing about the Big Ten and he's never had to recruit in the Northeast. That's all that Penn State does. It doesn't seem on its face like it makes a lot of sense. However, this could be a very good thing. Playing devil's advocate with myself here, Manny Diaz is a is a decent coach. He's a good defensive coordinator, maybe not a great head coach, but this is somebody that maybe needed some new new air. He needed a new landscape, a new place to go to make him a little bit uncomfortable, right? He had been in Miami for a very, very long time. Three years as the head coach. Before that, three years, I believe, as the defensive coordinator. He's always been in the Southeast. He's gone from everywhere from uh, from Middle Tennessee and Louisiana Tech to Mississippi State and Texas, etc. He's been all over the place. But always, basically, in that Southeast footprint, I'm curious how this is going to work out. And I'm also curious about James Franklin. I know that you lost Brent Pry, and that's somebody that had been with Franklin for an incredibly long time. But to go out and get a coach that only knows the Southeast, that is surprising to me. I, I would think that you would want somebody, especially in that role, somebody that is comfortable and familiar with the Big Ten that has somewhat of an advantage up there. But maybe you needed new life, too. Maybe you needed a new voice in that locker room, somebody that has not just been a lifer around those parts. So we'll we'll see how this works out. It is a strange fit. Not saying that it's going to be a bad one. Just saying that on its face, it does not necessarily make sense. But I can see both sides, how it will work and how it won't work. So, again, we don't grade them. We just sit back and wait and see exactly what turns out. I'm I'm interested. I am interested in that one for sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.